I've had a lot of mentors and um, people over the years who've been very influential in my progression as a writer and as a human being. But when I think back, the one that stands out the most and comes to mind is Sterling Plump, who was one of my teachers at Chicago State University's MFA program. He was actually my thesis advisor and we've become great friends over the years. But one of the things that endeared me to Sterling was his way of sort of mentoring me in the idea of language and what that meant. He took a special interest in me and he had me come by his office all the time and we would talk about the world. Not necessarily poetry in that sort of like contained way. We would talk about world issues. We would talk about other countries. We would talk about people. But he would always make the connection back to language, literature, poetry, and humanity. Um, he had some of the most wonderful stories to sort of like listen to. I would be just sort of mesmerized and he would talk about his relationship with Gwendolyn Brooks, who was one of the first, well, he, she was the first African-American poet for a collection, Annie Allen. And she was one of his mentors. And so I always like to think that I'm sort of a descendant of Gwendolyn Brooks in that way. He would tell me those personal stories where she would call him to her apartment and give him a couple of hundred dollars because she knew he was broke and struggling. And, you know, she mentored him as a poet. And he became one of those poets from the Black Arts Movement that I really came to respect. He was a member of Obasi, the organization of Black American culture, which um, has some sort of very um, influential um, poets and writers like Sam Green Lee, who wrote The Spook Who Sat Behind the Door, Haki Madabuti, Carolyn Rogers, Angela Jackson, and then you got Sterling Plump. Um, I remember times going to Sterling to the blues um, clubs. He would take us, he would, he would take the class of the blues club and we would go to Bl Buddy Guy's Legend in Chicago. And we would just sit around and he would just like have us fellowship and, and, and sort of that close knit family that he created with, with our class. And that special interest that he took in me as a writer um, never failed me. And he was the one that encouraged me after I got my MFA to go get a PhD. He would tell me, you got, you need to get every piece of a degree that they are offering because of the things that you've been through. You don't want them to give you any reason to deny you. And I've always took that to heart. And so um, everywhere I go, I take the lessons that Sterling Plump gave me because I think he's just a, a great human being and he's someone that's very, very dear to me.